Genesis chapter 32, uh, verse 22. When you get there, say amen. I want to hear you shout. Amen. Amen. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two woman servants and his eleven sons and passed over the forge of book. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. When he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint. And as he wrestled, he said, let me go for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. He said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob called the name of the place Penal, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penal, the sun rose upon him, and he hauled it upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh in this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today. Father, I pray today that you administer to your people. Thank you for this opportunity we have that we can come out under this tent. Father, we know from your word that you like tents. Lord, all through the Old Testament, your presence traveled around in a tent. Father, we know today, God, that we have a wonderful opportunity. We can set up this tent and we can preach the gospel. Father, we thank you for this nation that we have, that we still have the liberty and freedom that we can set up a tent out in this field and preach the gospel. And Father, I pray today that your spirit would draw, for you said in your word that none come except you would draw them. And I pray that your spirit would draw your people. Father, not only draw your people, but would draw the lost and the undone and those that need hope today and those that need help and father help us to be prepared to be able to preach the gospel to them and father we thank you lord we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for it in jesus name and everyone says amen, amen. i'm just going to try not to preach for long try to get you out of here at least by midnight if i can amen, amen. oh i only got like two amens there amen but we're going to talk just for a little bit about Jacob. We know Jacob. We know the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know Jacob and we know the story about his life. And we know how the 12 tribes came from his loins. And we know about all those things. And we know the story of how Jacob and his brother Esau and how Jacob uh, robbed him or tricked him out of his birthright and tripped Isaac out of the blessing that was to be bestowed upon him. And But what I want to talk about for just a little bit this evening is I want to talk about the change. How many knows that there's nobody that can change you like the Spirit? of God can. I'm not real old, but in my years I have found out that unless the Spirit of God changes you, you will not change. Unless the Spirit of God speaks to the heart of man and changes him, it does not matter how many great sermons they have heard. It does not matter how many uh, great services they have been in. It doesn't matter how many people want them to change. It doesn't matter how much they know they need to change. Unless the Spirit of God changes somebody, they cannot be changed. I have found out that you can see people that want to change but cannot change we can find people that know that it would be a good idea if I would change we see people that change for a month change for a week maybe even change for a year but when they try to change in themselves many times they fall back into the very same traps that they changed from but I'll let you know something today that whenever Jesus Christ changes you old things pass away and all things become come to you. I want to tell somebody here tonight that there is a spirit 
light uh, that comes from the throne room of God uh, that though your sins be like scarlet, they can be washed uh, whiter than snow. Uh, I came to tell somebody tonight, I don't know how long uh, you've tried to change, uh, how many times you've tried to give up what you're going through uh, and have not been able to do it. Uh, whenever Jesus Christ comes in and changes you, uh, he'll change the way you think, uh, the way that you talk, uh, the way that you act, uh, the way that you move, uh, because that was the promise that he gave his disciples. He said, if you'll follow me, I'll change you. He said, if you'll follow me, I'll change you from fishers of fish to fishers of men. Uh, how many here have ever been changed? Uh, then you are a testimony that he can change you. Uh, under this tent tonight, you are a testimony that he can change you. Some of you are here today and raise your hand said he can change me. Others say, I wish I could change. Listen, you just listen to this preacher tonight. Jesus Christ can change you. Uh, I know that you've been going through this and you think it might never change. Uh, your situation might change. Uh, your mind might never change. Your problem might never change. But I'll let you know today, uh, if you'll turn it over to Jesus and let him change you, uh, he can change everything uh, there is about you. Whenever Jesus gets done changing you, uh, it's so complete, uh, it's so extreme uh, that you sometimes surprise yourself. Amen. Uh, you can tell when Jesus has really changed you because you start driving down the road and saying, you know, I can't believe I didn't cuss him out. Uh, uh, you know, I can't believe I did that and didn't lose my temper. Uh, you know, I can't believe that I, I, I went through that and didn't have a nervous breakdown. I, I haven't even taken my nerve pill today. What's going on here? When Jesus changes you, he changes everything about you. He changes your mind. He changes your heart. He changes your life. Come on, somebody. He changes your affections. The things that you used to love, you'll hate. The things that you used to hate, you'll now love. My God, isn't it great when Jesus changes you? And listen, is there anybody in here that if you were who you used to be, uh, wouldn't be sitting underneath of a tent on a Sunday night listening to some preacher rant and yell and jump around in this tent? You might be out in a bar school somewhere. You might be laying in a drunken stupor somewhere. You might be in a hotel room with somebody that's not your wife. But thank God, Jesus saved you. He changed you. He changed your heart. He changed your mind. He changed your life. Hallelujah. We find out that Jacob, his mama named him Jacob because when he was born, he came out holding the heel of his brother. Jacob means, in the, you know how sometimes when mamas are going to have a baby, they go get a book with all these names in it. And then all these names of what they mean. Like Michael means like God. <laughs> I mean, I thought I'd just go ahead and throw that in. Huh, I mean, food for thought. Food for thought. It's a good name to name your kid. I'm not going to find out what Kenneth means. Handsome one. Handsome one. Man, they really missed that, didn't they? Oh, praise God. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, Kenny. Uh, uh, Jacob means supplanter, deceiver, trickster. Come on, somebody. That's what it means. And you know, most of his life, he lived up to that name. Huh. See, a name in biblical days was not just what they called somebody. Most of the time today, we choose a name based on how it sounds or naming after a person or naming because nobody else really has that name and it's unique or for whatever reason, we name people the things that we do. I find out today that some people even name their kids stuff like apple and orange and, and you know... You're going to get beat up when you get to school. And, uh, but you know, we just pick names for random reasons. But in biblical days, they picked a name because it was the essence of that person. It had something to do with their character. It had something to do with what they were. Come on, somebody. It had something to do with uh, whenever Isaac was born, it meant laughter. It was because his mama laughed whenever he said, you're going to have a baby. 
Come on, somebody. Whenever we begin to look at the names of these people, they meant something. They meant something. There was something about them that distinguished them or something about their character. And Jacob's name, how would you like to have that name marked on your life for eternity? That you were a trickster. That you were a deceiver. That you were a person that could not be trusted. A person that you could not turn your back on because the moment that you took your eye off of him, his name depicted his character that he would get you. Is anybody here today? And he lived up to his name. Jacob was a person that wanted blessed more than anything else. He wanted the blessing. He wanted the prosperity. He wanted the birthright. He wanted everything that there was to offer. Everything that God had to offer. Everything that his father had to offer. Everything that family had to offer. If it was out there, Jacob wanted it. Many times we find ourselves wanting the blessings of God. We find ourselves looking for success. We find ourselves trying to gain the world. My Bible says, what would it profit us if we would gain the whole world and lose our soul? Listen today, I want to tell somebody, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter the blessings that have been stowed upon you. It doesn't matter how rich you may be in earthly things. If you have not been changed, if your name has been not been written down in the Lamb's book of life, it will not profit you anything. It will not only last as long as you do, but when you begin to deal in the eternal commodity of the soul, you will last forever. Everything that you do will continue to go on even after you and I are pushing up daisies. We find here that Jacob wanted blessed more than anything. And in seeking for this blessing, he lived up to his name. We know the story of how Jacob tricked his brother Esau to sell out his birthright for a bowl of porridge. We find later on as we continue with the story that he not only got the birthright which which was to give him the inheritance, the double portion of the inheritance for the oldest son. Not only was it the birthright but then he went on and deceived his father Isaac to get not only the birthright but the blessing. The blessing is what would happen whenever the father was felt like he was about ready to pass on. He could not uh, complete his patriarchal duties in the family and so he would take the oldest son And he would lay his hand on him and he would be a transfer of authority, a transfer of wealth, a transfer of power to say, this is now the authority is being vested in him. And we know the story that Esau was a hairy man. He was, listen, when you can put on goat skins on your arm and your father fill those goat skins and think it's you, you are hairy. Esau was so hairy that his arm must have been like goat skin. Huh? We find out that Jacob and his mama worked up this trick. He said, listen, you go cook your dad some deer steak. Now, you know that'll turn somebody's mind, won't it? Huh? You go get him some tenderloin, roll that in egg, flour, fry it in grease. Well, grease makes everything better. Huh? Fry it in grease, make some gravy and put over it. Take some goat skins, tie them to your arms. When you go in there, your dad's going to be so captivated by the aroma of tenderloin and gravy that he's going to forget all about your voice. They walked in there. He says, you sound like Jacob, but I can feel your hairy arms. And he said, you feel like Esau. Come on, somebody. They went through this trickery. You know the story, Bible, Sunday school stories. Finally, he tricked him into laying his hand on him and pronouncing the blessing, the transfer of authority. So now we find out that not only did he steal the birthright that Esau didn't care for, but now he took the transfer of authority to become the patriarch of the family. Is there anybody in this place with me today? And you know what happened when Esau found out about it? He vowed to kill him. He said, I'll kill him. I'll kill him. 
The Bible says that Jacob took off running uh, to his father-in-law, or it was his uncles at that time, that became his uncle slash father-in-law. Uh, things were operating a little different in the book of Genesis than they do now. He went to Laban's house. And once again, he was living up to his name. He went in. First, he worked seven years for a wife that he didn't want. Then he worked seven more years and got the wife that he did want. But then he said, listen, I'll keep your herds for you. And let's make a pack. He said, the speckled herd, the ones that come out of the sheep that are spotted or speckled, I'll keep them since there's not very many. And you keep the solid collar ones. He started intermeeting them and breeding them and putting them together to where when it was all said and done, he was beginning to have more flocks than his uncle slash father-in-law. Amen? And his uh, cousin slash brother-in-laws, this is getting confusing, was getting upset because they said, he's running off with all of our inheritance. Once again, living up to his name as a deceiver. As a supplanter. As a trickster. Amen. Come on somebody. And they had to run him off. Huh. Are you with me today? He wanted blessed so bad. That not only did he want the blessings his father gave him. He was beginning to rob and steal the blessing from anybody that he could. If God blessed him, great. If he had to bless himself, great. If he had to deceive to get it, he would. If he had to use trickery to get it, he would. He was living up to what his mama called him when he was born. He was living up to the essence of who he was. He was living to, up to his character. He was living up to his namesake. I'll let you know something today. Uh, it doesn't matter how blessed you are. It doesn't matter how prosperous you are. You are always stuck with who you are. Doesn't matter how we dress ourselves up. Doesn't matter if we put our suit and tie on. It doesn't matter if we start going to church. It doesn't matter if we sit on a pew. It doesn't matter if we sing the hymns. It doesn't matter if we read our Bible. The truth is, you're still stuck with who you are. Whenever Jacob went to the family picnic, I'm sure he went to show off his blessings. Look at all these flocks I've got. Look at all these children I've got. Look at all the things that God has blessed me with. And even though they may have smiled and said, yeah, that's great, that's wonderful, as soon as he turned his back, they said, yeah, but he got it all from trickery. He got it all from deception. He was still stuck with who he was. He was still Jacob. He was blessed, but he was still Jacob. He may have tried to cover it up with prosperity. He may have tried to cover it up with all types of different things, uh, but he was still stuck with who he was. Who are you trying to cover up today? Is anybody here? Who are you trying to cover up today? Who are you really? Not just who you are on Sunday morning or Sunday night. Who you are when you got your suit and tie and your long dress and your hair in a bun. Who are you really on Monday? Who are you really on Tuesday? Who are you really on Wednesday? Who do you have to try to keep down? Who do you have to hide when nobody else knows about it? Come on, somebody. Huh? Who do you have to hide? Who do you have to get rid of that's down inside? And although you may try to cover them up, you may try to cover them up with fancy cars. Uh, you may try to cover them up with money. You may try to cover it up with friends. Uh, you may try to cover it up with relationships. Uh, you might be able to fool the preacher. You might be able to fool your family. Uh, you might be able to fool people. But you cannot fool God. Uh, and you cannot fool yourself. Uh, because the truth of it is, God knows who you are. God knows who you really are not the facade that you put up when people are around but he knows who you are when you're all by yourself and there's nobody there to tell on you that's who you really are that's the person that you're really trying to cover up who is it that you're trying to cover up inside of you who is it that's in you that you're trying to cover up is there a liar in there that you're trying to cover up? Is there a, an old hussy in there? 
that you're trying to cover up? Is there a cheater in there that you're trying to hide? Is there a bad temper in there that you're trying to cover up? Is there lust in there that you're trying to hide? Is there addiction in there that you're trying to hide? It's quiet under this tent tonight. Jacob was trying to hide who he was with the blessings. He was trying to hide who he was with prosperity. He was trying to hide who he was by putting enough money in the offering plate. I wish I had half a church under this tent with me tonight. He thought if he did something good that it would cover up who he really was. But the truth of it was it didn't matter how much good he did. He was still a supplanter. Is there anybody under this tent with me? It doesn't matter how much you do. You're still stuck with who you are. You're still stuck with what you were born. You were born in sin. You were shaped in iniquity. And I'll let you know, you in yourself can do nothing about who you are. You can do nothing about what you have become. You can do nothing about the addictions you've set up in your life, the strongholds that you set up in your life, the demonic attacks that you've set up in your life, the strongholds in your mind that you've set up in your life. There's nothing that you can do to change who you are. Is there anybody here today? I come to preach to somebody that's tired of being who you are. That's tired of the real you. My God. See, we look so much at the outside. The Bible says men look at the outside, but God looks at the inside. I didn't care if you feel like everything's all right and you're not that person anymore. Thank God for you. I come to preach to somebody that's tired of who you really are. That's tired of who you are are when nobody else is around that's tired of who you are on Monday when everybody's went back home from church that's tired of who you are when all hell's breaking loose in your life didn't matter how blessed Jacob was he was still a supplanter people still knew him as a supplanter they may have smiled when they were at his face but when they turned his back, they knew who he was. His character spoke for him. He lived up to his name all of his life until one day, the Bible said he was at the ford of the Jabuk River and he had sent his 11 sons over and his wives and all of his flocks they had already crossed the river and he was just about to cross when all of a sudden a man showed up. The Bible says that Jacob wrestled with that man. I read the text to you. He wrestled with that man all night until daybreak. He wrestled with that man and the man kept saying, let me go, let me go. It's getting daylight. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Amen. The Bible said that he reached down, touched the hollow of his thigh, dislocated that joint. But he still held on and wrestled with this man. And the Bible says that this man was God. You say, I don't believe that. Read your Bible. It says, and God blessed him that day. I don't know about you, but the way I read it, I believe it was an Old Testament incarnation of the Son of God. I believe that he wrestled with Jesus. Uh, are you with me, Uncle Dan? You believe that too? All right, I got two or three witnesses. Uh, uh. I believe he wrestled with Jesus at the Forge of Book. I'd like to parenthetically insert this that if you really want to have a change in your life, it might take more than a little 10 minute prayer. Come on, somebody. 
It might take more than just somebody drop a little bit of oil on you. Uh, it might take more uh, than just something on the outside. You've already tried that and you're still stuck with who you are. Come on, somebody. If you want a real change in your life, I challenge you to wrestle with Jesus until he blesses you. Wrestle with Jesus even though it might hurt. Say, I'm not going to let go till I get my blessing. I, I, I might be hurting, but I'm not going to let go. I, I might be tired, but I'm not going to let go. I, I might feel like I'm going under, but I'm not going to let go. Somebody in this place, you've been letting go too early. You've been giving up too early. Early. You've been stopping before the blessing came. I want to encourage you, don't let go. Keep pressing forward towards the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm going to wrestle until you bless me. I'm going to wrestle until I get my answer. When is the last time you have been so determined that you said, I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to wrestle until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to pray until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to fast until I get my breakthrough. God, I wish I had half a church in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep moving until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to keep going to the tent until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to keep getting prayer until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep reading until I get my breakthrough. I don't care if the preacher gets tired of praying for me. I'm going to wrestle till I get my breakthrough. I'm going to come on, somebody. I don't care if I use a bottle of oil getting anointed. I'm going to get my breakthrough. Somebody in here needs to get that tenacity to say I'm not giving up. I don't care how long it might be, how high the mountain might get, how deep the valley seems. How long the river seems to go, I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not stopping. There's greater things in store. This isn't all that God has. I'm tired of who I am, and I'm ready for God to change it. He said that he wrestled with him all night. But then it says that God blessed him. And I thought... How did God bless him by knocking his hip out of socket? You know, I really can't use that blessing, but my wife can. You know, I can't use a blessing like that, but I can take you to a couple people that could use a hip knocked out of socket blessing. Oh, praise God. How'd you like to get a blessing like that? I'd like to come up and ask the preacher, preacher, I just need a blessing. He said, all right, I'm going to kick your hip out of socket. <laughs> Hang on. <clears throat> How do you feel now? I feel like I got it. I feel like I got it. I feel like I got it if I could just get somebody to help me get back to the car now. Huh? That wasn't how Jacob got his blessing. After he wrestled with him, after he went through pain, after he went through all the pressure that came from it, uh, many times you have to wrestle through pain to get your breakthrough. Many times you might have to wrestle with the hip out of joint to get your breakthrough. Come on, somebody. Uh, but you know what? How he really blessed him is God looked over at him and said, What's your name? And when he asked him what his name was, he said, I'm a supplanter. I'm a trickster. I'm a deceiver. Is anybody here? Huh? If God was to ask you what your name is, how would you have to answer him? Not just what people call you, but wonder if God asked you who you really were. You might have to say, I'm an addict. I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, 
I'm a homosexual. I'm a witch. Not who you are right now while everybody's looking at you. But who you are when you're all by yourself. Who are you then? If God were to ask you right now, who are you really? You would have to say, I'm Jacob. I've been a mess my whole life. I've covered it up with blessings. I'm rich. I got money. I got servants. I've got the birthright. I got the blessing. My pockets are full. I've got everything this world has to offer. But one thing I can't get rid of is who I am. Who I really am. Is anybody here today? Is there anybody under this tent that's tired of who you really are? Is there anybody under this tent that's tired of who you really are? If God asks you, you know how Jacob got his blessing? He looked at him and he said, who are you? He said, I'm a deceiver. He said, not anymore. He said, from this day forward, you will no longer be Jacob. But I'm changing your name. Is anybody here? I'll let you know. He said, I'm changing your name to Israel. One that strives with God or a prince with God. Is anybody here? I'll let you know. I don't care who you really are today. And I, what I said was exactly right. You and yourself cannot change who you really are. But if you ever, come on somebody, wrestle with Jesus. If you ever get in contact with the man that can change you, he can change your heart. He can change your mind. He can change your life. Wouldn't it be good uh, to know you're the same person on Monday as you are on Sunday night? Wouldn't it be good uh, to know you're the same person on Friday as you are on Sunday morning? Wouldn't it be no good to know who you really are? I find out that with most Christians, we don't have to be good if we look good. If we look holy... That's good enough. I wouldn't give you a nickel for a long dress and a big mouth. Huh. I wouldn't give you a nickel for a tight collar and a lustful eye. For years we have graded holiness on what we look like on the outside. Many people would say that preacher's not holy. I wore a long sleeve shirt for you. I mean, what else you want? Who else would wear a long sleeve shirt when it's this hot? Huh. But since I don't have a tie on, they would say it's not holy. But I'll let you know holiness is not based on what you look like on the outside. Holiness is how you dress many times when you go to church in your own eyes. Holiness is how do you act on Monday when you're at home. Huh. Because you can be holy in church and be living like hell when you get home. Come on, somebody. Holiness isn't how you dress. Uh, holiness isn't what you look like on the outside. Holiness is the content of the condition of your heart when it doesn't matter what you're wearing and there's nobody watching and there's nobody to tell on you and there's nobody to turn you in. It's just you and God. How holy are you then? Huh. Jacob said, I'm a deceiver. But I'm not letting go until you bless me. I, I am one that has got everything that I have through trickery and deceit. And God said, today, I'm going to change who you are. My God. I don't know about you. That excites me. Don't tell me I was born like this. Don't tell me that there's no hope for me. Don't tell me I can't get out of this mess I'm in. Don't tell me I've somehow caught some type of a disease that I can't get rid of. 
Come on, somebody. I know that's how it is today. We've classified every addiction as a disease, uh, and we've uh, uh, took every sin and said, you're born with that sin. There's no hope of you getting better. You were born that way. That's who you are. Listen, I don't care who I was. I know Jesus can change me. I don't care who you used to be. I don't care who you are today. You, Jesus can change you. If you'll wrestle with him, he'll take your old thoughts, your old habits, your old actions, your old loves, your old filthy heart. And though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be washed white as snow. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, that excites me because who I used to be couldn't go to heaven. Who I used to be couldn't come into the presence of God, but who he changed me into, now I can go through the blood behind the veil, boldly into the presence of God. Look here what he said. He said, today I'm going to bless you. Your name is no longer going to be trickster, deceiver, supplanter. But you are going to be he who strives with God. I want to let you know something today. Under this tent tonight, God can change who you really are. Man, I don't know about you. To me, that's powerful. That God... I can, God can do what I can't do. What I couldn't do through 12-step programs. What I couldn't do through counselors. What I couldn't do in myself and in my own abilities, God can do tonight. I want to serve a big God like that. If I had time, I'd get Joe to come up here and testify about how he came into a church service. How long ago, Joe? Come here. Come here real quick. We ain't got nothing but time. I ain't got anything better to do to you. Testify real quick, Joe. Tell them what happened to you in one moment. I, uh, I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. Um, I did three tours in combat, uh, two tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. Um, I was pretty messed up. Um, I tried everything I could to, uh, to hide the pain that I had inside. And... Uh, Within one moment, when I gave my heart to Jesus, he delivered me right there. No, no more heroin, no more cocaine, no more alcohol, no more anything. Within a moment, God changed me. And I know if God can change somebody who, who lived like hell for 28 years, that he can change anybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I'm not telling you a fairy tale tonight. I'm not telling you a fairy tale. It's a reality. It's a reality. Honestly, when I first seen Joe come to church, he was trying to get in our fellowship hall. And I thought he was trying to break in. I thought he was casing the place out. Huh? Now he's my brother-in-law and I get to pick on him anytime I want. Huh? One moment. I remember he testified, he said, when he got saved, everything got brighter. Collars got brighter. Huh. The addictions left. Huh. He testified to me and said he couldn't make it through a day work without a flask in his drawer. Am I telling the truth? Huh. But in one moment, huh, God said, who are you? He had to say, I'm an alcoholic. I'm a drug addict. And he looked back at him and said, not anymore. I'm going to change who you are. I'm going to change who you are. I know who you used to be and I know who you are now. But I'm going to change who you are. And you know what? The Bible says that Jacob left that place with a limp. <laughs> you know what that tells me? That when you have a real encounter with Jesus, you'll never walk the same way again. When you have a real encounter with Jesus, you'll never walk the same way again. You might come in walking this way, 
but you leave walking this way. You say that don't seem like much, but I'll let you know today, when Jesus changes you, he changes the way that you walk. He changes the way that you talk. He changes your mindset. He changes your perspectives. He changes everything about you. My God, wouldn't it be good if Jesus would visit somebody tonight and change who you really are? Just for a moment, I'd like every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm not asking you to bow your head for any other reason, but if you're saved, I'd like you to begin to pray. Ask God's Holy Spirit to begin to draw people. That's the whole reason we set this tent up. If you was asking me why you set this tent up, I'd say, no other reason than to get somebody saved because I am so busy. I have a million things going on. I had stuff going on all last week. I got stuff starting as soon as this is over. I have a funeral to preach this week. Got all types of things going on. But I believe this gospel that I'm preaching can change you. And that's why we set this tent up in this field. That's why every person that's here is here. That's why every worker's here. That's why every preacher's here. That's why every man and child and boy and girl that's working under this tent is here because we want to see somebody change. If you're in this place right now and you say, Pastor Mike, the truth is, I don't like who I really am. And sometimes I have to put on the front but who I really am, God knows all about it. I am tired of who I really am. And if he can change who I really am, I want him to change me today. If that's you, I want you to just lift your hand up and wave at me and say, Pastor Mike, I want, to ch I want God to change who I really am today. I wouldn't worry about what anybody thought. It just depends on if you really want to change or not. If you want to change enough, you won't care what anybody thinks about you. Listen, I'm not going to embarrass you. I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world. The only thing I'm going to do is pray with you. And I'm going to ask God if he'll change you like he did Jacob. Is there one person right now under the sound of my voice and you say, I need a change in who I really am? I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm not asking you to join an organization. I'm asking you, do you want Jesus to change who you are? for real if that's you tonight just wave at me and I want to pray with you